Welcome, Sammy, to the Awakening Series. This is a series where we bring brilliant minds together uh, to discuss their self-discovery, their awakening, all sorts of fun, amazing things. Today is one of my favorite days. It's New Year's Eve, and yeah, we couldn't right. your guest. Woo! <laughs> Kenny P, a.k.a. Uh, Shoebox Moses, is a phenomenal singer, artist. He's been around the world with Mind Valley as a DJ, as a singer, and I just can't wait for you uh, to hear his amazing story in regards to start to finish to next year to next week to everything in between so yeah so thank you for being on this uh, series i really appreciate it if you no would- i love it <laughs> absolutely i was honored that you asked for me to be on it i think um sometimes you get stuck in the woods or you know you can't see the label from inside the jar and when it comes down to playing and just traveling and being on tour sometimes you just forget what you did over those years or decades to kind of get to where you're at. And so when somebody, you know, especially a good friend like yourself tells you to explain what you've done and like share what's working for you, it gives you a chance to pause and reflect and what a better time to pause and reflect than New Year's Eve day, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was brilliant. I appreciate it. Just a little bit about (laughs) Tammy and I kind of ran in the same circle here in Denver, Colorado, but we never, well, we were actually in the same building multiple times. We Multiple times. Multiple times. We've talked about this, but we've never actually met one of my good friends, our good friends. um, She's phenomenal. And I, I can't wait to bring her on the show, but she was like, you need to sit down. You need to go. You guys need to meet. I'm going to put it together. And yes. you, I mean, from there, yes. the mm-hmm. we couldn't stop talking. I even flew out once and went to one of your DJing gigs for kids. Like, it was so amazing. I was so proud of you. It was so wonderful. The kids were amped. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, that was such a special time. And yeah, Cynthia, who you're speaking of, yeah, she spoke so highly of, of what you're doing. And I, I'm honored to be part of, of your vision and your mission because we have really similar uh, heartstrings, right? We're really working to raise the kids in a a space of creativity and i think our topic today is just on the flow state and what we're doing and how we get into it right yeah it's it's awesome it's all a a beautiful serendipitous thing so sammy please tell us about your amazing journey whenever i talk to folks when i'm traveling or when i'm playing music one of the fun things that i get to share with everybody is that i get to tour the world as a dj and a singer and a musician And most of the time, 90% of the time, people are way more excited to find out how I became a DJ. Down the road of of music, when I was young, I used to act like I was playing a guitar with a tennis racket. And I was always, you know, prepping myself to be on a stage. I never really knew what that meant, you know, but uh, I was always acting like I was on a stage, walking like I was on stages. So in my head, I always kind of wanted to do big shows and I never knew how that was going to work or how that was going to play out. I ended up being in bands when I was younger in college and I learned how to play the guitar and that led me to play with a couple DJs at these private parties where they were DJing and I was playing guitar with them and this is like the collapsed version. This is like 2001 or 2002 so the DJ scene was totally foreign to me. Um, everyone was still spinning on wax, you know, on records. Oh, wow. It was, it was a whole new scene for me, but that music, it just like got into me. Right. I was like, Oh, I moved to Denver. Um, this is another five years down the road. I moved to Denver. It's now like 2006 and I am just like immersed in the Denver scene and the Denver culture. Uh, and my friend, he's like, Hey, I've got, I have a gig for you tonight if you want to take it and it's nothing great, but make some money. And so I was like, yeah, dude, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. you want, I'll do it. And he goes, cool. So meet me at Alley Cats and then oh you'll God. be. I remember Alley Cats. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you're going to be working in the bathroom. You're going to be the bathroom attendant. And I was like, what is a bathroom attendant? I have no idea what that is. And so he shows me the ropes of handing out men's, napkins and just being the guy in the bathroom that like makes guys look cool and all this um the glamorous job of a bathroom attendant (laughs) so i i take this job by the reins right i'm like i have to make i have to make this work and so uh i end up making a couple hundred three hundred bucks a night as his bathroom attendant as a 
for a couple of the nights. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, I did. I was making great money. But here's what was happening. I was in the bathroom at Alley Cats, and right around the corner, if you walk out of the bathroom, I had like this straight visual shot of the DJs. Oh, and I was like, ah, there's the DJs again. I got to do, I got to figure out how to get from here to there. Like there's, there's got to be a connection here somewhere. And so it was just in the back of my mind, like my vision, I was like, I will be on that stage. Like I'm going to figure out this stage. So I start saving my tip money and I, you know, the DJs will come in and use the restroom and like, I'm starting to make friends with everybody in the club. And so I'm, trying to like figure out how to learn this skill set and I realized what the DJs love are free shots so I start <laughs> saving my money and I would go buy the DJ shots and take them up there and they're like oh yeah so I mean and and you know me we're you I'm like you we have like this when we're in our flow we mm -hmm. have this magnetic energy about us and people are like dude just come back up here come back up here and so and I would buy them drinks and they'd teach me how to play and so it was it was a Friday night, and this goes on for about five weeks, right? Like every weekend, a couple nights a week, I'm just trying to learn this stuff. And the what had happened in those five years is the vinyl had switched into the digital realm. And so there was a lot more music you could pick from instantly and you could take music, I could put it on kind of a thumb drive, put it in the computer and then I was able to play a bunch of different music so I was studying like what music was making the dance floors go crazy I was starting to get a little bit more familiar with like what moved people mm -hmm. and so it was a Friday night and I still don't I I tell the story all the time and I cannot remember for the life of me which DJ it was <laughs> but he got hammered and he wasn't able to play and I was like, oh, no. And it was not a good look. I wouldn't condone that. I was just like, oh, no. So I stepped up and I kind of got in the pocket and I took out my little USB drive and I put it in his computer. And I remember just looking out and the song is like ending. And I was like, oh, my God. So I'm in there and I, I load up my first song and I'm just like, Whew. Yes. And it just starts going and uh, oh I, I mix my first song and then I just see everyone, they don't even notice, you know, at first. And then as I got into it and I mixed my second one and I started kind of working, working the crowd and I saw them. And then I saw the people working at the bar and they're like, isn't that Sammy from the bathroom? <laughs> What's he doing? And so I ended up, I ended up playing for about 20 minutes um, and just, whip the dance floor into a frenzy and and you could tell there was like a whole shift there's a different style of music that was being played that I was playing and they're like whoa what's happening and so but then I had to go back to my station so I went back to my station um and the night kind of resumed on and I just remember being like whoa that just happened so the end of that night kind of happens there was a promoter that was in the crowd he's like you did an amazing job we should totally have a party with with you there's a bunch of people you should meet uh that would like love to see that that was incredible it was shortly thereafter i got introduced to a promoter named kevin larson kevin larson brought me on stage oh, in front of my <laughs> yeah he brought me onto my biggest stages in denver right starting out and he put his faith in me to dj one of his new year's parties oh, and so fun. and then i had my little mixer it was like the size of my ipad and i remember setting up for my first new year's party and i had like you know my first DJ set up and the people that were there were like, what is that? What are you going to play on this? And I was like, yeah, of course. But um, I plugged a microphone in to the back of my DJ gear and started playing some of my original tracks and just started playing music and started doing the thing, you know, of me for singing and flowing that turned into a huge night, a huge success for me. And it was, you know, off the heels of those parties, I started getting booked pretty consistently for anything major that would ever open up in Denver. They would hire me to DJ, perform, and do the things um, that they needed in Denver. And this went on for six, seven years. Uh, I'm, playing in, I'm playing at a place called Wicked Garden downstairs, and a gentleman who had become kind of a mentor for me introduces me to some online marketers. These online marketers invite me to go to a festival in Maui called Awesomeness Fest. <laughs> Awesomeness Fest 
is now a fest which is run by vision lakiani of mind valley they were thrilled i was thrilled we ended up having this incredible bond um a fest and you know awesomeness fest back then it facilitates some of the most incredible friendships uh and connections deep ones and we can go into that later but as, as as time moved on that was the first year i played the second year i was like man i hope i get to do that again and I learned something really special on that first trip, which was nurturing these deep relationships. Right. And if there's one thing that I've really learned over the years, I'm not the best DJ in the world by any stretch. I'm pretty amazing at entertaining, mm -hmm. but I am incredibly good at nurturing and keeping connected with people um, in a genuine way. And so I just stayed connected with Vision and some of the people that I really had deep connections with. They invited me back again the next year. Um, the bonds got even deeper. I learned more about the company ethos. I learned more about what they were doing as a company, how they were scaling and changing hundreds of thousands of lives every year. And I just fell in love with their mission. And then I started meeting new people from that same thing. So I started widening my webs and I started meeting Yannick Silver of the Mavericks who ends up one day taking me to Necker Island. And I meet people like Ryan Dice who throw the biggest digital wow. marketing events all over the world. And they take me to traffic and conversion. I meet JJ Virgin. I meet all these people by doing what I loved and expanding on the connections and keeping front and center there. So. Well, I think doing what I was loving to do put me in a state of flow energetically so that I was able to really attach to people at their heart. Mm -hmm. And so they, they and I, we really just knew what their vision was. And Vision's vision was mm -hmm. to impact a billion lives. Wow. And it's like, what a better way to do that than through music and these events and the things that you're doing. Let's scale that as best as we can. So what happened is the flow of energy and, and what was happening, I was learning very quickly how I fit into that. And that wouldn't have happened if I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be famous. Because it was never about that for me. It was just like plain impactful shows for people that were really changing the planet that was just my vision that's what i wanted to do and so it allowed me every time i stepped into play and dj for those events to not play what i wanted to play it was really about playing what i knew that they would want and so i was doing these little things that were teaching it was teaching me how to find the music that that crowd wanted. It was helping me find the messaging and the sets that I was putting together. Cause it's all about unity and love. And, and I was just, I was having a time of my life. I mean, you've seen these parties, but there's a level of what you have to do to take it to the next level. And so I was like, Oh my God, how am I going to make this party even greater and grander than the one we just did? And so that was the start of the, the whole the whole frequency and understanding flow for me uh, inside that. That was one of the biggest lessons I learned for sure in performing. And it all started back when I did the first gig coming from the bathroom and stepping into the place where I was like, oh, this is what you have to do uh, is you have to keep your visions in front of you. So I was like, shit, that totally worked. Let me yeah. ask you a question about that that first stage moment were mm -hmm. you i'm sure scared as heck but were you able to hit a flow state um there was for sure there was definitely a flow state anytime i step onto a stage and i can see uh, as a as a vibe creator or implementer i think any dj any dj that's really good and connected with his audience gets this gets this um, and in a club environment where it's smaller, Alley Cats wasn't that big. I mean, it could hold like 800 people. So I could see everybody's eyes, right? I could look into their eyes when they're open. And I was like, "Woo, I got you. This is, we're going to do this. That's a totally, totally incredible flow uh, to get into. And what, what had to happen for me is I had to practice playing so many times for me to get into that. So that very first time, there was probably just two songs, maybe three that I felt in flow because the rest of the time I was like scrambling. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what is happening? You know, I'm trying to figure stuff out. But I do remember towards the tail end of that, uh, there was two songs that I put together and I was like, oh, that's what that is. That's how that works. And so, yeah, once, 
once that crowd got going crazy, uh, that was that was flow for sure. Um, it was a it was that total first time when I really felt that as a DJ. I'd felt it before as a guitarist and stuff, but as a DJ, there was for sure flow uh, there. But it expanded big time when I started playing for a fest traffic and conversion and i did tons and tons of gigs inside of like the wedding circuit inside yeah. of mitzvahs i did like as many life cycle events as i could because i needed the pay to get practice yeah. i was like i need to practice because this is one it's amazing but yeah the flow state for me really i think a lot of people like um stephen kotler talks about flow states Favorite are you book. familiar yeah stealing yeah fire. stealing fire <laughs> He was at an A-Fest one year and he and I were chatting and he was like, I, oh yeah, he's wow. one of my homies. He's great. Oh he's amazing. He, he was chatting and we were talking. I was like, what is going on when I have flow state like that? Because when I play with DJs, uh, normally DJs will stay in their same zone. They'll just play the same songs that they know and they'll just beat match them and link them up. What Steven and I had noticed and, and when we chatted a bit, he was noticing when I get in flow state and a lot of the folks at A-Fest and Vision and those guys that have watched me over the years, it's been 10 years now that I've been playing for them. They watch what I'm able to do with the crowd. And I've started to notice this too. I, when you're in flow, you don't notice it, mm -hmm. but I've been watching some of the videos and I see what happens now is that I can listen to the music that needs to be played. I can find the music on a computer that needs to be played. I can perform in a microphone and then I can talk and have conversations that are going on. So I know what is moving and what, what's happening. I was, uh, I was talking to him about that and he's like the amount of brain power that must go into what's happening when you go into flow state is insane. And after the end of shows, I'm so beat. I can barely like make sentences. Sometimes there was a, there was a couple parties that I played one at Red Rocks when I got done. It was like the first time I played on the main stage. We opened for Kid Cudi and Empire of the Sun. Uh, it was my first time. On Kid Cudi and Empire of the Sun. I just have to restate that. That's amazing, Sammy. Seriously. Oh, thank you. It was. It was incredible. It was one of those incredible moments where you just leave the stage and you're just like, what What just happened? Like everything that I've ever dream like dreamt of, my vision boards, all the stuff that I had put in front of me over the last decade up until that point had been like, get on this stage, perform here. And you know, that's your, that is your ticket out. And you get done with that. And that rush comes over you and you're done. And you're just like, whoa, was that it? <laughs> what do we do now? And so I've had those moments, but I've noticed inside of a state of, of flow, um, you don't, you don't see it. Like when we were talking about it before earlier, like you don't see, the label from inside the jar, I definitely don't notice what I'm doing. It just kind of happens. Um, I'm, you know, I'm like 10 minutes from like my favorite beach zone, which is why I moved out here. And that's what we do when you surf, you just get in a state of flow, which is the other thing that he talks about in Stealing Fires. Surfing is one of those amazingly magical flow states that you can get in and it's the same thing uh for what we do as entertainers not just as djs so yeah that in a roundabout way that's how i started djing i know we went all over the place it. there I love it you have you have moments of consciousness for sure mm -hmm. uh and then you have moments where you're like whoa how did that happen like when you string together back to back back to back pieces of energy i mean they're songs really but when you put energetic messages and stuff behind things like there's a lot of music that i got from dj monos and a bunch of folks in denver okay, yeah. that really allowed me to speak a message through the songs that we we're putting together and you do it with the key you do it with bpm and then we like to take it a level deeper and take it and learn the message of the song mm -hmm. and so if you can take those three things and put them together you can take these folks on this ride and you take yourself on the ride too. Like I'm right in it. So when it's, when it comes to um, being present, it comes in waves. Cause sometimes you'll be like, Whoa, you'll be so in flow. Uh, and this happens majority of the time I play like the end of the night comes and I have everybody kind of at a, a massive crescendo. Yeah. And then like the venues are like, 
Oh, we no. need you to stop because it's just like getting crazy. We've broken a couple stages at A-Fest and the other places <laughs> I've played. That's where you can see the flows happening because you can see, and I've watched myself too, and I've watched other amazing, like when you look at an incredible scratch artist or you look at somebody that is just an insanely good DJ, the amount of work that's going into their hands, they don't even think about it. When I play guitar, I don't think about it. I think when you play an analog instrument like a guitar, Mm -hmm. or a wind instrument or anything like that you actually get into a much higher state of flow so because okay yeah okay. there's definite different levels um that's a that's a soul connection you've got string and wood and, and energy and you're just bringing that to life when when i play as a dj there's an interesting kind of back and forth balance between the digital world the real world the internal world mm -hmm. and so what i'm trying to do is like i have to find this music uh, I have to load it into a device mm -hmm. and then I have to listen to make sure it's great internally and feels good and then send it out. So there's an interesting balance because you're bringing so many different machines into it. But when you play like an acoustic guitar or a saxophone or something like that, and you just sit in it. There's a whole different type of flow. It'd be like, it's, it's similar to like what a person that is driving in like a, maybe NASCAR, but in those super high-end F1 series kind of races where they're so attached to their machines and they're so into it, like any minor movement makes th this insane piece of machinery do stuff. It's the same thing kind of in a way that when you DJ that way, because when you're sending that much sound and that much energy to thousands and thousands of people, Mm -hmm. it's just this it's this incredible sense of of responsibility one because mm -hmm. there's nothing worse when a dj sucks and <laughs> brings that energy to a cataclysmic you know destruction zone oh, and yes. and there's nothing better than when a good dj brings everybody together as one energetically mm -hmm. and so uh knowing how to take your flow state to whatever mechanism or instrument that you're using is a really, really important thing that you have to realize you're going to do. And, you know, whether it's going to be in guitar or whether it's going to be me singing or whether it's me doing all three of them together, the biggest thing that will allow somebody to get into flow state in a way that's very impactful and leaves people in a state of awe is when you know your craft so well that you're not thinking and yeah, that it that just is. happens. I love that. And so that, that comes, exudes. yeah, yeah. It exudes because you can just channel and become one with what you're doing. And there's no question. There's like a level and you see it with professional athletes and you see it with professional entertainers and, and the folks that do things that are, take such a high level of focus that they master all the basics all the basics are mastered, which allows them to get into a state of flow. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's probably a very basic thing to say, right? But it's absolutely true. You have to master the basics. So whatever the craft is, whatever you guys are wanting to do, whoever watches this, hopefully that they have found a way to enjoy mastering the basics and pushing themselves outside of their comfort zone. But Mastering the basics is the first and surefire way that you'll be able to attain the flow state. So at least in inter entertainment, there's other ways that people get in the flow. Most people can get into some type of a flow state mm -hmm. when they listen to the music that they love, whether it's grunge, whether it's rock, whether it's classical. Absolutely. I mean, you, they say the, the brightest minds play the same song over and over to get them into a flow state in which they're doing, whether it be an engineer, um, you know, engineering something and, and right. something, something divine comes into him and, you know, he's thinking of all these equations and whatnot. But music itself, to me, is a true flow state in itself. So yeah. for a person to then make the music and to bring the music to to the audience is just so brilliant. So for flow state, you were like the first person I thought of to to bring to the audience because your insight behind 
behind it all is is like a double it's it's you get to listen to the music you get to create the music you get to bring other music to people and like for example when i saw you in ibiza i think it was last year or the year before i was and all these people dancing on a day during the day and i was like oh my gosh like a flow state during the day um on the beach <laughs> like how much better can it be and right. uh, I was just so enamored by like what you're doing in addition to the music that you were playing. Like, I think, I don't know if I was in my car or something and I was like, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, if you play music anytime, music is one of the most insanely, like the most magical gates to flow. Like, mm -hmm. and that's, that's, you know, that's why people like Michael Jackson and all those people that we love so much, they get us into a different state, right? Tony mm -hmm. Robbins and the people that will, that I've always followed, they all talk about changing your state instantly. If you want to change your emotions, if you want to change the momentum of your life, if you want to change the outcome of your, of your destiny, you have to change your state mm -hmm. and changing state through music is, like the easiest thing to do you just mm -hmm. turn it on you find it but like to your to what you were saying too you you find one that really works for you like i'm listening to this incredible producer now named kiosamos and that's my flow state like i listen to that and i can project my vision of what i'm doing into the into the future but pull myself there energetically and emotionally so i can feel what i'm going to be feeling there which brings me through that, right? It pulls me into this compelling vision of the future through music. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the most powerful things. If, if there's anything that anyone takes away from this, wouldn't you agree? It's using music yes. to change state. Yes. And that will instantly allow you to, to find the next step and get you either yeah. closer to flow or into flow. And I that most people have listened to it know this, but I think one of the things as somebody that is professionally hired to change states in people instantly and to get people grounded in a state of flow. It's the magic formula to raise your vibration, to get you into another state yeah. immediately. So let me ask you, changing this uh, topic just a bit, what are you doing today? Like, what are you doing for the community? I know, but our audience doesn't know much at this point. Oh, you some insight on on what you're doing with kids and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, well, the first thing I'm doing this year, like it's the 31st of December, I'm taking some really intentional time to map out what my vision is of uh, my foundation moving forward. So I have a foundation in the Philippines where we really champion education for orphans. And we actually took on a bit of a pivot this year as I realized one of the biggest things that we can really help uh, kids do is find new homes. And so our vision and our mission this year uh, for the foundlings is to get 100 kids new homes and then try to find what we are not even trying. We are going to find 1,000 jobs for the kids that cycle out. So that's our big vision and it's funny, I know there's one thing that we kind of left out too, which is, you know, the name and, and where, where these humble beginnings came from. And it's kind of interesting in that state of performing and learning about what my, my you know, flow zone is, I, you know, I, I quite literally changed who I was. And that'll happen for a lot of people. I mean, you've known me as Sammy for so long, uh, but in the, in the journey as a musician and a DJ that led me back to the orphanage that I was, I was found in. And I found out that I was found in a shoebox, left in a dumpster. We used that story to basically kind of form this new identity for myself. And it happened when I was with the Mavericks and I was traveling back and forth and they were like, what do you want to do with that story there, shoebox Moses? And so this name that, you know, some of your listeners might know me as the shoebox Moses came about from me performing so much in a new person, in a new skin that I started wanting to go back and impact the lives of these children by teaching them, you know, creative arts, by, by getting myself in front of the most powerful people 
as a different performer. And so what happened now and what's happening is so many of the kids that I work with from A-Fest and Mind Valley to the, the Mavericks to wherever I'm at, they now know me as Shoebox Moses, which allows a lot of these kids to talk about what's going on and what's wrong in their world and how they can push through, you know, challenges and what's, you know, what's really eating at their hearts because it's, you know, right now with social media and these phones and these little dopamine, you know, think these little machines that they just hit like and just scroll through and have empty hits of, you know, meaningless connection. Kids are finding it hard to really connect to the soul and connect to the flow. And uh, if there's one thing that we're really championing right now, Kimberly, is to help those kids um, starting, you know, I do a lot of work with the orphanage and I do, I probably talk to them at least twice a week, trying to figure out what we can do. Marissa Piers and John, her husband, uh, we're, we're working together. We're using the I Am Enough movement and right now to one, educate the, the people uh, that work in the orphanage, all the teachers, the staff, uh, the folks that dedicate their lives to helping these kids survive and thrive uh, in the orphanages. We've put a huge push towards getting these programs in their hands first, because that's a hard thing when you know you're just like, oh my gosh, this is all I'm doing, but th they have to realize how beautiful they are and mm -hmm. how much they're doing and so the i am enough movement with marissa and john is something we're implementing um, across the world with them yeah it's it's a it's an incredible time um for for us in alignment right and that whole thing has taken years for us to put together so that's one big thing we're doing and also piggybacking with the foundlings to just raise that vibration of self-worth of finding true passion and a calling for what they know that they have a longing to do mm -hmm. it just goes back to show that you can learn anything right now um i have a question for you sammy yes can you tell our audience where they can find you oh yeah absolutely you can go to shoeboxmoses.com they can find everything they need to know about either my shows my tour schedule um they're updating the tour schedule right now and then it has a link to the foundlings.org, which is our nonprofit. But those are the two places you can go to shoeboxmoses.com or the foundlings.org. Yeah. Okay. So I just have to say happy new year's Eve. Cheers to 2020. Yes. One last quick question. Um, bonus. It's a bonus. What does Sammy T or what will you have on your 2020 um, vision board in, in, Three sentences or less. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> 2020 vision board. It is pilot's license. Um, yeah. New house. Nice. And 100 kids in homes and 1,000 kids in jobs. Oh, my gosh. That's beautiful. I love it. Good job. <laughs> that was a great bonus. Thank you, Sammy. I love yeah. you. Love you. Happy, Happy New Year. Life. Happy New Year. Take yep. care. God bless. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, mm -hmm. so much.